Ma'in wa ba'du Alhamdulillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us that he has allowed us to gather in this beautiful gathering in the remembrance of his beloved Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the final prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the best of creation sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, and uh, before uh, sorry for the uh, Barging in, but before the talk, uh, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with some brothers <coughs> who are going to perform some nasheeds in Arabic. And uh, uh, Alhamdulillah, it goes to show that uh, leaving the plans to the best of planners always works out because uh, without us actually inviting these brothers, mashallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent us brothers from three different <coughs> corners of the world to sing in the praise of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, uh, uh, inshallah, if, if they like come forward, inshallah, we'll sing a few nasheeds in Arabic. Uh, but before they do come, uh, just to remind ourselves uh, why, we here, why we are here today and w- w- what is this gathering in aid of. We are here today to remember our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But the question will arise, why are we remembering the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And the simple answer to that is because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would, and in his sujood, he'd always say, Oh Allah, my nation, my nation, my people, my people. And he would always do dua for us and ask, for, uh, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to enter the Jannah, the paradise, in the hereafter, then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say, that I am not happy. Until each and every single person from my nation, from my ummah, from my believers enter the Jannah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant the request of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's du'as are accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, and when, when one is happy with someone, you can imagine when a person is happy with his father or a person is happy with his mother, how that mother or how that father will feel and how happy that mother and father would be. So how would the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how happy would the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would, will be when we are sitting here in this gathering and remembering the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we are happy about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if, and if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that he, that every time we send salutations upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, every time we say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then these salutations reach the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So don't think that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is unaware of this. Rather, he is aware of our salutations and he is aware of us being happy with him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this happiness is, is something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us also to be happy when, when a mercy comes to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it, be happy and rejoice and celebrate for indeed it is better than anything you are gathering. It is better, better than the dunya you are accumulating, it is better than the, the money you are gathering to be happy with the mercy which of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a mercy which has come to you and what you can imagine when a person has a child or a person has a job how happy he can be then how could you imagine if the best of creation sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has come to us and we, we are not being happy how is that possible for us not to be happy with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the best of creation sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this act of sending praise and salutation upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the brother, mashallah, blessed us with his voice and his beautiful poem which Imam Busiri wrote in the praise of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa It's not an act which we are maybe doing today, rather it's an act of what the Sahaba were doing in the presence of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the, the, when the poet of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sayyidina Hassan ibn Thabit radiallahu anhu, he came to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said to him, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I want to sing in your praise. O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do? He told him, O oh Hassan, sit on my member, sit on my pulpit and praise me. And that was in the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Hassan radiallahu anhu started to praise the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in abundance. And uh, remember his qualities sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and address his qualities sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was so happy, he was so happy that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took his cloak off sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and gave it to Hassan as a reward. Uh, so you can imagine the reward we, which the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, put for us in, for praising the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.
And also in another hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, when another companion who was a great poet, he came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, Ya Rasulullah, I want to praise you. And before I do praise you, I want to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet ﷺ again told him, come and sit on my pulpit and praise me. And before you praise me, uh, praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he did the hamd, the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the Imam said, mashallah, uh, did the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by reciting his kalam, by reciting the Qur'an. And then when the, this companion stopped and finished praising the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say to this companion? He said to this companion, he raised his hands and did dua for this Prophet sallallahu for this companion. And as we know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa dua is accepted with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what did the Prophet, what did this Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa which dua did he do this for this companion? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to this companion, "Nawwar Allah wajhaka, wa adhak Allah sinnaka, wa atal Allah umrak." And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said to this companion, "May Allah subhanahu wa taala illuminate your face, brighten your face with nur, and may Allah subhanahu wa taala make make your teeth remain smiling, and may Allah subhanahu wa taala." give you a long life and they say about this companion that he lived for over a hundred years and every time his teeth would fall out they would always come back and they said his face was lit up like the moon in the night and the sun in the day so this was the barakah of the prophet the, the dua of the prophet sallallahu and the istijaba and the uh, acceptance of the dua of the prophet sallallahu so what are we going to ex- expect from the Prophet ﷺ, if we are sitting today here and praising the Prophet ﷺ, and I'm sure we won't be ex- expecting anything less. And if, if that was what the Prophet ﷺ was going to give us, then that's more than enough for us. And if he was going to give us more, then that is from his, his generosity. And the Prophet ﷺ was known for his generosity ﷺ, because when the companions would say that someone would come to the Prophet ﷺ and ask the Prophet ﷺ, they would say that he would give ﷺ and he would give in abundance. And they would say that same person would come and ask the Prophet ﷺ and the Prophet ﷺ will give and the Prophet ﷺ will give in abundance. So the Prophet ﷺ is the most generous of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So inshallah we'll, uh, we will uh, uh, happily listen and join in in the praise of the Prophet ﷺ after hearing all these rewards and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what the rewards in, in Allah subhanahu, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are far more greater because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his giving is beyond our giving because he says if we give one fold, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him a tenfold and his tenfold will keep on uh, growing as well. So inshallah we will have a few uh, nasheeds in uh, Arabic and hopefully we could sing along as well. Uh, we just invite the brothers from uh, the Cambridge uh, Islamic Society inshallah. We have mashallah brother uh, Ahmed Burachi who is originally from <coughs> Syria, a blessed place. And as you all know, we had the pleasure of studying in this blessed city. Who, and there are many people who love the Prophet ﷺ. And also we have another brother from, um, who's originally from Egypt. And as uh, Brother Mustafa, as you know, the people of Egypt have a deep love for the Prophet ﷺ. And not just for the Prophet ﷺ, rather for the family of the Prophet ﷺ. And this is something which we have been commanded by the Prophet ﷺ. Because the Prophet ﷺ told us to hold on to two things and to hold on to two things firmly, and those two things are the Qur'an, the Kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Qur'an al kareem and to recite the Qur'an of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the family of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you can imagine, we love the family of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how much love we will increase for the love of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And all these means are but for, the, to, for us to increase our love for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and no other reason but for this reason. Why? Because there will come a day when everybody will be turning to all the Prophets and they will go to Ibrahim salam first and they will go to Isa salam and so on to all the Prophets and they will all say, this is not our job. We cannot, we cannot help you. The intercession and help for you today is, is not in our hands. So they will turn to the best of creation sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they will ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet sallallahu this is for me, this is for me, and this is not for anybody else, this is my business, and I will intercede for you. So you can imagine, if the people who are asking for the intercession of the Prophet sallallahu in this world, uh, are asking for the intercession of the Prophet sallallahu in this world, then you can imagine that the Prophet will, will not deny us of his intercession in the next world sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.